The main thing I remember is that you gave me the paper by Rick and his group on silicon SIC2. That's right. And I was working on carbon phosphorus double bonds and carbon sulfur double bonds and silicon is the next one in the periodic table and I thought well I don't fancy doing this because it's looked very hard and uh, this was a beautiful paper that you were really impressed with and you gave me this paper and uh, said that I should go and see Rick and of course Rick was on the at the top of his peak of his uh, ebullience because he developed the, the cluster beam system. And he was jumping all over the apparatus and the thing is what, 10 foot off the ground, maybe longer. And I was doing this, I was thinking we could vaporize, instead of silicon carbide, which is what was being vaporized at the time, how about graphite, because that would simulate the conditions in the star where these carbon chains were being. So that night, Went back, same with Bob, we talked about this. And Bob, I guess you were as enthusiastic as I was. Well, I was not that enthusiastic at that particular moment. I'm, I'm always eager to try something new, but Rick was definitely not enthusiastic about this particular experiment. And I, I was, you know, I thought it'd be an interesting experiment, but I didn't know that we wanted to divert what we were doing. One thing about Rick is he was, a, he was all about focus. He was one of the most intensely focused people I've known. And so um, we sort of put it off and put it off. And, and uh, then I don't know whether it was Harry that reminded me or I reminded myself some way or another uh, the, the proposal by a guy named Alec Douglas at the uh, uh, National Research Council in Ottawa that maybe the profuse interstellar bands were uh, uh, carbon chain molecules that said, hmm, that's interesting. Uh, this, we could do Harry's experiment, which I'm not incredibly interested in, but the same apparatus could look for the spectrum of carbon chain molecules and maybe we would be the the first people to actually uh, give an origin for these bands which were actually discovered in 1919. Then, after he was invited, uh, Rick decided to look at the literature and he discovered this paper uh, from uh, about almost a year before. He hadn't seen the Exxon data. He had the paper, the paper by, uh, uh, that came out of the Exxon group. Really? And then, so he hadn't seen that? He hadn't seen that, okay. So, so anyway, this, they had sort of, sort of done this experiment. In a, in a certain sense, they had sort of done the experiment that Harry wanted to do. And as I remember it, Rick called back and sort of disinvited Harry, saying <laughs> that, oh, we can get this data for it, send it to you. It's so trivial that, that we don't have to. You know. <laughs> You don't need to go to the trouble of coming over. And well, I, 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 well, another reason for coming is, first of all, we're good friends. Secondly, I do, did like traveling uh, more than I do now. But there was a half-price bookstore <laughs> here. And Bob will tell you that uh, half-price, a bookstore, and particularly half-price bookstore, I can spend the whole day in. Well, the big thing that happened with uh, Jim Heath, Sean O'Brien, you and the students, was that I think what made the difference we varied the conditions. They got the spectrum, they went on to the next one. Uh, the key thing was, very, I think, varying the conditions, which we were going to do with hydro, putting in hydrogen and nit uh, ammonia into the system. And it, when you vary the conditions, what happened was the C60 peak became, under certain conditions, went through the roof. You called me and said uh, something, look, Rick's got something. And it, you also mentioned something similar to that thing, that model. So I came in and I remember we were just totally elated by, by, um, by the seeing this little paper model on the thing. And um, so it, 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 it was, a, in every way, it was a team effort. I mean... And a great piece of luck, pure, yeah, pure yeah. serendipity. You know? Yeah, I mean, uh, but, uh, there, you know, everybody was involved 
totally involved with it at every stage.